during the past days I was working again on that uh, very easy synthesizer project. There are earlier videos about this and I want to refer to them. And the only important thing to tell is that I made a few switches here with which I can uh, bridge the tone knobs of the synthesizer here. And that gives a kind of good, say, other setup. The switches were, uh, say, very easy here. Perhaps they are visible here. They bridge the contacts in the uh, square wave oscillator. And for everyone interested, here is that circuit again. And there was m uh, much more explanation in the earlier video. There's not so much more to tell it anyway. Uh, so here, only in the first, say, row of capacitors, row uh, of capacitors that give a certain frequency, I have made here a parallel switch here. So that not only when you touch the knob here, here, uh, but you can also bridge that with a fixed uh, switch so that the oscillator starts to give out a certain fixed frequency. And of course when you bridge them all uh, the frequency will go down. But on the other hand you can search for the different positions of all these uh, switches and of course uh, the, the whole circuit is completely experimental regarding the sounds that you can hear when you touch certain knobs. Uh, there's no direct relation to the knobs of a piano or whatever other musical instrument. Anyway, circuit again for a few seconds and then a demo. Uh, at the moment we have this frequency. Let's listen. And that frequency is realized by uh, moving this switch to a certain position. The position where it shortcuts the knob. This knob. And now we have this switch uh, switched on. That's the highest frequency in the circuit. That's, say, this capacitor. Here, capacitor 5, 10 nanofarad. So let's push to the let's push the other switches. And in this case, um, that capacitor of 10, of 10 nanofarad is bridged with other capacitors so that the frequency gets uh, lower. And on the scope, this is the, these are the waveforms. So this is only a vlog. Uh, anyway, it works and it gives new and other results. And by the way, when you want to change the square wave at the output to to a sine wave. This is the more or less ideal circuit here. 
um, I will draw it again and especially for these low frequencies this can help. Of course such a filter when you go to uh, say the World Wide Web and go to calculations of all kinds of uh, filters that have to change a square wave into a sine wave. There are many many calculations but when you do these experiments in real there are only say in general three uh, basic setups <coughs> and the first basic setup is here for such a filter. Uh, three uh, resistors of approximately um, 10k or 30k, so 30,000 ohms in a row and uh, capacitors that are bridged to ground. And in this case that are 220 nanofarad capacitors. They are made for the frequency band uh, around say approximately uh, 300 Hertz up to approximately um, 4 kilohertz. There this filter will work. For higher frequencies the uh, capacitors have to, the value of the capacitors have to be changed. So let me draw it. Here is a resistor, another resistor, and another resistor. This is the triple filter. Here is ground. In many cases, that is zero. So minus here ground and here we have the um, three capacitors that do the job. It's very important to tell that such a filter often needs uh, a resistor to keep it in a certain way decoupled uh, from the source, the square wave source. So in general let's say this must be between 1k and 2k and we are talking about square wave oscillators that work in the um, voltage range of 12 volts to say 18 volts. Then we have here that capacitor. That capacitor is of course crucial and like I told, there are many, many um, circuits. By the way, this is a four pole filter. Um, well, this is in this case say approximately 10k here. 10k and here 10k. You can also use 1k, 1k and here 1k. And of course the energy in such a filter goes substantially back. Say when we have here approximately line level that 0 0.8 volts AC <coughs> At the output of this filter, uh, it's diminished to say perhaps a few hundred millivolts. So you need an amplifier after this filter. And on my YouTube channel, there are many, many amplifiers that can do that job. One transistor amplifiers, very very easy to make, and I will give the links in the description. So uh, I was talking about such a filter, and in fact we have here too much filtering, so too much loss in that filter. This 
uh, say forced stage can be omitted. So you when you can use it, of course, but it can also be omitted. And uh, so let's take out here on that arrow the signal, the filtered signal between this point and ground. So forget this part of the filter. And for filtering in the range of um, like I told, uh, say 800 hertz up to approximately 5 kilohertz, this can do the job. These capacitors have to be in that case in this range, 100 nanofarad. And also here, 100 nanofarad, and also here, 100 nanofarad. For frequencies in another range, say a higher range, uh, above approximately 10 kilocycles, this cap these three capacitors have to be changed to approximately 10 nanofarad. So 10 nanofarad here, 10 nanofarad here, and 10 nanofarad here. And when you send in here a square wave, it will be converted to a a sine wave. All, always good when you make such a simple filter to look with your oscilloscope probe how the frequency, uh, how not the frequency, but how the waveform changes. So look with your oscilloscope here, the probe here, and the ground of the probe here. Here you see a kind of triangle wave. And here you see also a triangle wave, but a triangle wave is rounded edges. And here finally on that uh, uh, stage you see um, a, a sine wave. That's more or less the classical idea how to change a square wave, like it showed here. This is a square wave. A square wave into a sine wave. And there's another issue, of course. Here the duty cycle is not exactly the same. That means that when you want to change this uh, square wave into a sine wave, it could be that there is a kind of distortion in the sine wave. But in general, that's my experience. Also, when the duty cycle is not perfect, uh, the, re the uh, result could be, is in many cases, a good sine wave with not so much distortion, at least, and then I mean, of course, for hobby purposes. I'm not going into, say, uh, scientific uh, issues or scientific ideas about how uh, pure such a sine wave must be. For hobby purposes, this, this in general, and what I, exp what I have explained earlier, works properly. So, do your experiments. Uh, no problems with that. And of course, uh, when you change the value of the resistors here, it will also have an effect on the on the sine wave, the pureness of the sine wave, etc. etc. Of course, there is a lot of mathematics on the World Wide Web about this three pole filter. But in general, when you want when you are a hobbyist and want to make this in real, there are not so many problems. And uh, that's also the reason why I can show this setup. Uh, 0 0.22 microfarad, three of them, 
So 220 nanofarad, three of them, and resistors here in between in the 30k, 30,000 ohms range. So, thanks for watching. Quite a long video, I had not expected that, but anyway, uh, here the <laughs> kind of first ideas uh, about the synthesizer that I want to make. And um, the idea will be that we that I will change the square waves into sine waves and in another possibility keep the square waves and then then um, say make a vibrato circuit or whatever. Thanks for watching. Hope it was a little bit useful.